To talk more about China's role in the global climate debate, we have with us Orville Shell, the director of the Center on U.S.-China Relations at the Asia Society. Thank you very much for being with us. Pleasure. So China says that it wants to significantly reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, yet at the same time it has overtaken the United States as the world's largest aggregate polluter. Do you think that um, Chinese officials are being entirely sincere about uh, what, it, what they want to try to accomplish? Well, they are demanding the right to become a developed country like Europe and the United States, Japan, Australia. They do not guarantee to reduce their aggregate emissions. They have agreed to reduce the amount of energy they use to produce one unit of GDP. In other words, to lower the energy usage per unit of production. But that's still going to mean that for a long, long time, China's going to be producing more rather than less greenhouse gas emissions. And China seems to be very assertive at Copenhagen. Um, is this behavior typical of uh, China that we can expect in the future? Well, the Chinese are very tough negotiators, and they tend to go to the very last minute, you know, and very rigid. Uh, but they are departing from the, the, the whole uh, presumption of the Kyoto Protocols that the developing world must help, uh, be helped by the developed world. In other words, the rich countries much, must help the poor countries deal with climate change. And, of course, the United States did not sign the Kyoto Protocols. Moreover, the United States is relatively uh, bereft of funds at this particular point in history and not disposed to giving them to China. But isn't it also a contradiction that China wants to, insists on being classified as a developing nation, which in a way allows it to circumvent sort of binding uh, limits on greenhouse gas emissions, uh, yet at the same time it wants to have all of the benefits of being able to, to develop its, its economy industrially? Well, it definitely wants to develop its economy, and it does not want to be a developed country. It does not like the idea of the G2, the U.S. and China, the big shots, because it sees itself still as a poor country. So it does keep its head down, and it does demand that it get help, and it does also uh, 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 buck against the notion that the outside world has a right to come in and inspect it and verify whether it's meeting its obligations. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese Premier is going to be speaking at Copenhagen later to this week briefly give us an idea of what we can expect to hear from him. I think he's going to say what they've been saying all along. They're waiting for the United States to lead and the United States is, in meanwhile is locked up in the U.S. Senate. And so Obama will arrive without an awful lot that he can say because he doesn't want to get out too far in front of the Senate. I think China is not going to agree to binding limits on carbon emissions anytime soon. All right, Orville Schell, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure.